Hi everyone. Today I am working with the Hello Ladybug stamp set and punch that came out in the spring mini catalog. It is super cute. I've made a ton of cards with it, but I've broken the videos into three because um, they I didn't want it to get too long, but it's really fun. You can just keep going and going and make lots of different cards with it. So I'm making two that are kind of based off these two are kind of based off catalog samples and sometimes it's fun to look at the catalog samples. You can kind of switch them up a little bit based on what you have and um, it's nice to kind of dive in that way because you get a feel for the set and then you don't have to worry about what you're going to do yet. You're just kind of going off the idea from the book and then you can, um, or online photo, and you can um, start from there. It gets your juices going. So I started with those and then I kind of branched out and made some more. But this video is going to show you a couple that are very varieties of the catalog samples. So let's get started. The first one uses a base of Night of Navy and then I'm using designer series paper from the Heart Home and Heart, Heart and Home, Heart and Home is probably right, paper pack. And that paper is really fun because oops, one side is planks, like these kind of white and gray planks, like pine wood planks. And um, the paper has a variety of planks. So this one is, you know, thicker. There are some that are thinner. There are some on a diagonal. Um, really fun paper. And the other side has kind of wildflowers and um, bumblebee, real soft kind of, um, kind of like a calico print type look to it. Real pretty. Anyway, and um, so take a look at that paper. But I love this plank side. And it's cool because a lot of times um, there's only two of each paper in a pack. And this one, every back every, I don't know, A side or B side, which is the A or which is the B, but the backs of all of the designer series paper is a plank of some kind, white and gray, just different sizes. So you get a lot of them and I've been using it a lot of it. So I'm glad. All right. So I'm starting off there and then I'm going to use some paper for my ladybugs that is from a paper pack that I think is super cute. Let me show you. All right. This is called pattern party. This is a host paper. That means it's a, you know how in the back of the catalog or at the end of the catalog or even online, at the end of the online catalog, there's something called host rewards or stampin' rewards. So if your order comes to $150 or more, you get to choose some sort of reward. And in the annual catalog, one of the rewards is paper this time. It's almost always a stamp set, but this time they threw in a pack of paper and it's not just a little pack of paper. It's a thick 48 sheet pack of paper. I believe 48. I'm going to double check that. So I'm not making that up. Yeah, 48 pages. I mean, look at this. And it's patterned on one side and then black and white patterns on the other side. So fun. And I'm using this one. This one I'm going to use upcoming in a bumblebee. But for this one, I'm going to use this really cute black and white polka dot for the body of my bee. So I want to grab that and punch out two bee bodies <laughs> with this paper. There we go. And then also from the same pack, I'm going with this really fun, uh, it's a green floral, it's granny apple green, and it's got a little floral pattern in it, really subtle, and I'm going to use that on the same card as some leaves. So I'm going to punch out a few of those. I think three ought to do it. Okay. Now part of the idea behind having a punch is that you don't need to have a one of those cut and emboss machines. So um, I'm going to use a punch for my sentiment as well. So I'm going to go ahead and grab navy as my ink and my sentiment. Stamp that. It says, may your greatest wish come true. Now, I didn't know that ladybugs are meant to be lucky. I had no idea. But they are. So that is why that would be a great birthday uh, sentiment. So on the inside of my card, I think I'm going to add a birthday sentiment. Okay, so I've got my sentiment. And then the other thing I need to stamp are wings for my ladybug. So let me grab that another piece of basic white. This time I'm going to stamp my wings in real red. Now 
now when you're stamping from a punch kind of know where the image is on your stamp <laughs> on your punch because if I had stamped it this way it wouldn't have I would have had to trim my paper I'm going to do one more just to have it since I have space and I know I'll use it eventually okay so then I'm going to punch these out. So this is what I meant by knowing which direction the wings go. Because had I done something else, I would have been you know, cutting off areas and having to trim my paper to get it in the punch in the right place. So there are some wings. And maybe I should have stamped the black spots before punching them out. I don't know if that would have made my life easier. That's what I did before. I don't know why I forgot to do it this time, but I did. So I want the spots to be black. And there is a spot stamp that lines up with all these spots at one time. So we're going to use it. And they were really smart, I believe, Stampin' Up! was, in that they made the spots bigger than these spots. So that when you put that black on top, you don't have to be perfect you know you can be just a, a hair off and which you usually are right and it's still going to be okay so let me see if i can get these spots on sorry my head's going to come in the shot i bet because i need to be right on top of it okay You can also fill in the spots with a marker if you felt like it, but it's, they're real easy. I was real pleased when I saw that the actual spots were slightly larger. Okay, so I've got that. I've basically got all my pieces. I am ready to assemble. So. putting my base down and then for the rest I'm going to well I guess not the rest and for my sentiment oh I used a paper that already had something on the other side <laughs> that's okay and my ladybugs I'm gonna go down with the dimensional as well but let me put the wings on just so that I know what how much space I'm taking up here so for these wings, I'm only adding a little bit of adhesive to the back of the body, right at the base of like where their neck, if they had a neck, would be. <laughs> and I'm going to take my finger and just kind of curl these up like that, just to give them a little dimension before sticking them down. There we go. Now I'm going to stick those down. And I'm going to add the leaves last just because I want to know where to tuck them under. And I think that'll work nicely if I get those down. You notice I put the dimensional kind of in the center of the body so that I'd have plenty of space to tuck the leaves under. There we go. Okay, now for the leaves, I like to give them a little bit of dimension with a vein. So I'm going to, you could either use your fingernail and kind of go like this. I don't know if you have a foam mat, a paper pier piercing mat that Stampin' Up! sells. If you check on the clearance rack, at least it was yesterday, this mat, this foam mat, this is meant to go with a Stamparatus, but I use it just for its foaminess and it was on the clearance rack for like just over a dollar forget how much it was exactly but it was really inexpensive and you can use this to kind of do some scoring so I'm kind of putting in you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to rip the paper since this is designer series paper it's not card stuff but you can give a little vein to your leaf and give it a little dimension that way and it's more leaf like yeah check the clearance rack for the foam mat they're good to have on stamping too. As you notice, I stamp on like a stack of paper and that kind of gives a little bit of a cushion or a bounce to my stamps 
when you're using photopolymer stamps, they don't have that built-in rubber like our rubber stamps. And so sometimes you don't get a smooth image, you get a modeled image, and that little bit of cushion is really all you need. So this acts as my cushion, but I did buy a couple of these on the clearance rack recently because I thought it would be good to bring to classes. Uh, my tables that I use at the class are hard like this, and I give everybody one little paper mat to kind of, you know, protect the table, but this gives a little cushion and it's reusable. Anyway, check the clearance rack. It might still be there. Sometimes things sell off the clearance rack really fast, but a little cushion is a good thing. So now I'm just going to take these little leaves and kind of stick them like they're coming, like the ladybugs are hanging out on the leaves. Maybe they're munching away. You can rip the leaves and use one. Yeah, kind of gives a little more color. It's super cute. Now on the inside, I'm gonna do, like I said, a birthday. So I just grabbed another piece of the white and the Hello Ladybug doesn't have a birthday. It's got this one. So I'm looking through my stamps this one was on my desk because it's kind of new. It's from Celebration. Celebration only goes through February. But this stamp set is free with a $100 purchase in February. And it is a good one. Look at all of the sentiments in here. And so I really like it. It's got a great birthday, but so much more. And um, I like, where would I be without a friend like you? I like, um, here, this one's cute because it's a card. It says, um, I have something for you. You're holding it <laughs> for a card. I like to hang in there. This one says, just a card to say you're amazing. We send so many cards as a card makers, and these are great. Um, I couldn't wait for a special occasion because you just want to say hello, right? So anyway, I'm going to use that happy birthday. And I think so far that is the only one I've used. So where is that birthday? Here it is. Now, if you don't have this one, think about it. Think about doing a celebration order. Um, but you might have some birthday stamps in your stash. I'm going to go with navy since that's my card base. There we go. And if you wanted, you could stamp another little guy on the inside. Now, I think I will. I'm going to grab this one that I just cleaned and put away <laughs> from the last video I made, but that's okay. I'm going to get it out again. Okay, so this guy is going to go... He'd be real cute on the envelope too, wouldn't he? So he might go on the envelope too. Right, and then in real red, we're going to go right over the top. Now, if you don't want to have to line up, you can use a marker. But like I said, they made the dots smaller than these dots. So the red layer, because they knew that these would be so dark that you can go over the top of the red. Let's see if I do this okay. Sorry about my head being in the way, covering the shot. Look at that. I mean, perfect. Okay, so that's going to go on the inside. Okay, there's one. And then the other card I wanted to do for this video is also based on one from the catalog, and I'm using Flirty Flamingo. So this is a flirty, flirty flamingo base, and then here we have two and three quarters by four. Okay, and we're gonna use the flowers from the stamp set. They kind of come in a little whoops, bunch, and I'm gonna stamp those in flirty flamingo. Kind of cascading down the card. So we're gonna go. like 
that. And then some accents in pear pizzazz. Pear pizzazz, yes, it is. Just here and there, a little bit of green. Sometimes I like to group more together just so it's not always three, 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 three. And while I have that out, I'm going to do a few flowers on the inside of the card. Alright, so this one I am going to glue down towards the left side. Alright, now I also need to stamp a leaf. There's a big leaf in the set, and I'm going to do that in the pear, which I just put away for some reason. <laughs> there we go. Let me see if my scrap is big enough. Just barely. This is one of those stamps where it's really important to have a cushion because it's so big and a lot of flatness. <laughs> so this is a good, good one for that. All right, now we have to cut this one out, but this shape is pretty simple. That's just getting glued right down. I'm covering up all my nice stamping. Maybe I'll go down a little bit here. There we go. And then the ladybug. Oh, that's got something on it. Let's see if I can fit it here. And this time I'm doing the wings in Blushing Bride. Let's see if I have room for those wings. I do. Okay, I want to show you another option real quick. <laughs> Grab a little scrap here. So this time, instead of a ladybug, we can make a butterfly. So we need a body, and this gives you those antennas you need. But let's think about the wings differently. So let's do Blushing Bride. I don't think I'm 
gonna squeeze another one out of there. And then we can do the spots in maybe the flirty flamingo. Or you could do purple spots. You can make your spots whatever color you like. Let me clean the black off first though. And I think I'll go with flirty flamingo. I was really off on that one. I um I find that the light and light is harder for me to see. Whereas that red was such a big contrast. Okay. So now So we're just going to do a couple little snips. We're going to snip the sides of our B. And we might have to snip him a little further here as well. So I've got two options here. Let me, <laughs> I went a little fast with that one because I was trying to be quick. Let me grab a hello. This is Blushing Bride. And I'm going to stick that on a dimensional. That's still wet, so I'm going to leave that alone. We'll use that on a different card. This one. Can go right there. There are two simple cards with the ladybug or butterfly punch. And then next video will show you a bumblebee using the same punch. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you think it's cute. Do check out the celebration catalog because it's only got a month to go and it's February's short and we're already a weekend. So only a little bit while to go on celebration free items with a $50 purchase. Think about getting the ladybug bundle as part of that $50. Thanks for watching. Bye.